City Alderman Bob Donovan says he met with accused gunman John Spooner about an hour before he allegedly shot 13 year old Darius Simmons. Donovan told CBS 58 News that Spooner seemed disturbed that morning and he knew he had problems in his neighborhood that included break in. A mask over his face, putting a handgun in his pocket and walking into LNA Market. Now, when he does so, he pulls the handgun on the clerk and puts it to his face. Now, that was his first big mistake because the clerk is a former Marine, not this woman. His second mistake was this surveillance video, which caught it all on tape. His third mistake was that the clerk's dad was watching from behind. He came over, grabbed the bad guy from the arm. They struggled. They fell down here. Now, look at this. The gun went off, a bullet hole going right into the ice cream machine. Luckily, the gun jammed. They all fell to the ground. Now, that's when customers jammed, jumped into the fray picking up pickle jars and bashing them over the head. Here's where the case stands now. Let's roll the videotape. Accident. I was working a fatal fire in the area when I stumbled upon the crime scene, got out of my car, actually was able to stand about two to three feet from the victim, who appeared to have been shot about three times. It happened at this very intersection, and thanks to merchants putting up area surveillance cameras, it was all caught on videotape, and that led police to make an arrest just yesterday. Take a look. So Greg goes up and down these streets, clearing the snow, burying cars in. Folks come out, dig themselves out, leave, come back, only to find that Greg has come by and buried them in again, sometimes in about three and a half feet of snow, as you can see here. And who's to pay for it? Well, this resident, Manolo. Just a little more than five months after LJ, as he was called here in the neighborhood, was taken down by gunshots at Playmakers, things getting back to normal, or almost. The manager here says she's the only one standing after that day. Everybody else quit. But the reward for the conviction and finding the suspects still stands at $10,000. Good evening, I'm Carlos Rigero. Thanks for being with us tonight. We begin with breaking news. Marquette men's basketball coach Buzz Williams accepting punishment for NCAA rules violations. It's a one game suspension for a head coach, William. Well, the bribery trial of a former county supervisor is over and not only did the jury find Johnny Thomas not guilty, some directly challenged why he and they were there in the first place. It was an unfair trial to have gone to court and it was pretty much a waste of the tax dollar. Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney and his running mate Paul Ryan made a campaign stop in Ohio today. Do we want four more years of the same? During their appearance near Columbus, both Romney and Ryan voiced their opinions on President Obama's time in the White House and what they feel is an inability to get the country and the economy back on track. President Obama is spending a long weekend with family at Camp David. When Wisconsin Congressman Paul Ryan and other Republicans are in the national spotlight for their convention, President Obama will be trying to steal a little Wisconsin thunder. CBS 58 News has learned that the president plans to visit Wisconsin next week. Exact details haven't been made public, but we've learned the stop will be part of a bus tour of the battleground states, including Pennsylvania and Ohio. Meantime, Mitt Romney is coming under fire for making a joke about the president's birth certificate. Take a listen. No one's ever asked to see my birth certificate. The Obama campaign says Romney is aligning himself with extreme elements of the party, the birthers, who still question whether the president was really born in Hawaii. Romney later told CBS that there's no question, and those are his words, that President Obama was born in the United States. He says we've got to have a little humor in a campaign. Republican vice presidential candidate Paul Ryan will be in Janesville on Monday. It's for a send-off rally to the convention in Tampa. It'll be held Monday morning at the Janesville Craig High School, but organizers say you'll need a ticket to get in, which you can get online. Well, the controversy surrounding the firing of now former Milwaukee County Parks Director Sue Black is growing tonight. According to Black's attorney, the county is holding on to personal property belonging to Black and refuses to return it. A letter sent to County Executive Chris Abley spells out that when Miss Black was fired, she was locked out of her office and only later did her personal effects arrive at her home in boxes. Minus items like calendars, notes, her address book and tape recorder. A chaotic confrontation between police and a suspected killer and more than a half dozen innocent citizens who just happened to be on the street all caught in the middle. Tonight, new video of this morning's shooting near the Empire State Building. Take a look. A passerby with a cell phone captured this spectacular scene as police shot dead a late off clothing designer. 
There's also a new surveillance video you're looking at tonight showing the 58 year old suspect pulling a gun on police. Ballistics show he never got off a shot. A crash involving a Fond du Lac Sheriff's deputy leaves one person dead. It happened at the intersection of County Highways B and K in the town of Eden. You're disgusting. I can't stand you. How could you do that to my dog? It all happened on an idle Friday afternoon. Maribel Sanchez came walking into the kitchen where the family keeps a closed circuit monitor to watch the cameras on the property. That's when she screamed out for her mother because the neighbor who had been hired to lay brick was up to no good, say police. Look what's happened. I go, I, I, I just, I, I can't believe it. I go, what's he doing? He was having sex with me. He was raping my dog. As Maribel ran out the back door to the aid of Diego, the pet dog, she screamed. Diego! Mom stayed in the kitchen watching. He just pushed the dog away from him and he just kind of went with his pants. Diego! Maribel screaming for Diego was enough for the suspect to zip up and give other excuses. Unfortunately, everything was caught on this surveillance camera. The bad part is the videotape, it wasn't rolling. Now it's their word against his. So we went in search of answers from the accused. Mr. Mora. 58-year-old Jose Mora. He wouldn't answer his gate, and his sister-in-law and brother told us off camera that he was at work. And neighbors? He's a very nice guy and very good person. Meantime, Mora is out on bond and facing two counts of sexual gratification, mistreating animals, and a couple of charges of dog napping as well as disorderly conduct. But Diego's owners say Mora should pay the maximum nine months in jail and $10,000 fine. <coughs> Still, Diego, a family member to the Sanchez's, think Diego will never be the same. There's a bond that's unexplainable. It's it's, he's a part of our family. He's, he's not a dog. His name is Diego. Now, your complete first alert weather. Oh, Michael Schlesinger in the Weather Center, and tonight would have been a perfect day for the first day of Mexican Fiesta. A little bit humid, though, right, Michael? Yeah, Carlos, the dog days of summer really in full force here. We're talking about plenty of heat and humidity. And, Carlos, after that, a more significant cool down just in time for Labor Day. Highs then 60s to around 70. Big changes. And it's that good rain, Michael, the type yeah. that saturates, not just that sudden burst of right. a lot of rain. That Widespread just... showers, thunder showers throughout the day. We, we we'll welcome every. It's another sign that it's almost time. Time to get back to school. Great job. Keep it up. This morning was the fifth annual run back to school event at Washington Park. More than 1,000 runners took part in the event, which raises money for youth sports programs at MPS. Superintendent Greg Thornton says he's ready for the school year and to welcome the more than 80,000 students currently enrolled at MPS. I think we're moving financially in the, in the right path. By the way, kids, the first day it's for school at MPS is September 4th. Well, I know it's a Disney slogan and the Brewers haven't had the best season, but Miller Park certainly seemed to be the happiest place on earth tonight. It was the color run, the largest 5K in the country and about to go international. 10,000 runners actually registered and paid for the chance to be splashed with color with every stride. Everybody wears white. Well, why you ask? No reason other than to be silly and happy. And the pictures don't lie. Miller Community Charities, by the way, a partner in the color run, so a real sense of community and color and fogginess in Milwaukee tonight. 